Hello. Okay. So I believe day 159. Still going strong. Almost 365 day live. Oh my God. Um, so continue this money conversation. It's so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Uh, I just posted in my story some money beliefs. And so these are beliefs. These are things that we've heard say over and over. Um, like money is the root of all evil. It takes money to have money. Um, like the t it takes money to have money is like kind of like the mindset of like, you know, like people who, you know, are like born into a wealthy family and only them can continue to be wealthy, but not the rest of us. Uh, there are so many of these beliefs like or are being wealthy, being rich, having a lot of money means you're selfish, means you're a bad person, means that all all this stuff. And so these are like actually rooted deep in our subconscious because we've heard them so many times so even when you're going through my stories whether it resonates or not like if it does resonate then that is just something to be more aware of but if it doesn't resonate still have that like still have that in the back of your mind because it does get wired into our subconscious in so many ways like like the whole it takes money to have money like ideology for example i you see it a lot in um like the business world for example like in the entrepreneurial world where it's like oh you need like this amount of money to start a business or you know if you're a coach and you want to go make six figures you should invest in a six figure coach and and when you're starting you're like yeah, well, where am I going to get this money from? Right. And so that mindset of like, it takes money to have money. It's just like, it's so deeply ingrained and not only in just that phrase. And so a lot of these phrases, like, yes, they're general, but they're subconsciously put into so many elements in our life. Like sometimes we have that fear of if I have a lot of money, I'm selfish because look at all the other people in the world who are struggling. Like, oh, I, I should just like ask for what I need, you know, just to like enough to pay my bills, to have food on my table. But I'm not going to ask for anything more than that because that's selfish. Because, you know, there are other people in the world that you know, are struggling and, you know, I'm so privileged to be where I'm at. So this is all I'm going to ask for. That is another belief that's been programmed into us. And so, and my question is, why is it that only one portion of the population can be wealthy? Why is that, like, why is that whole idea of, like, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer? I, oh, how is that fair? We can all access wealth. We can all access money. We can all access abundance of money. We can all have it. Obviously, it is up to us to choose to, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to, like, make investments to have money. Again, you know, it takes money to make money. Like, that is also a limiting belief. And so... It's really, really interesting of thinking of these beliefs and how we, you know, put ourselves in this box, right? Like, I, you know, like putting ourselves in this box that we say we can't have certain things because we believe that we're not worthy of it or that, you know, other people have a life less than us. And so if we were to us more than, than you know, we're, we're selfish, we're this, we're that, but that's all true. None of that is all true. At the end of the day, each person is a creator of their own reality, whether they're consciously aware of it or not. You are the creator of your own reality. You get to decide what kind of life you desire to live. And if you want to have a life of just enough, then that's cool. 
If you want to have a life of more than enough, then that's also cool. If you want to have a life of less than, then that's fine. That's cool too. I'm not here to tell you what kind of life you should create, but I am here to guide you to think a little bit more about these limiting beliefs and what they are saying and how they are putting you in this box. And what if you can break that box and find your own sense of freedom in whatever that reality is? What if you can? For me, my idea of having more money than I know what to do with, like, I would love that reality. And the reason why is one, like, my own freedom, free to do what I please, when I please, free to buy what I want, what I desire to buy, when I desire to buy, free to put savings, free to be able to live where I desire to live, but then also free to donate my time and my money to causes I care about, free to be able to give back and say, yeah, I'll donate to this cause, I'll I'll go volunteer here because I believe that sharing the wealth and giving back to the community is important. And so that's how I see it. So it's, yeah, it may be selfish that I'm like, oh, you know, like I want more money than I know what to do with. But my perception of it is that that will allow me to share it. That would allow me to one do the things I desire to do and share with the world. And so when we look at these limiting beliefs, like I like to call them limiting beliefs because they limit us. And if you can break out of those boxes, out of those beliefs and see what the world is really about, then it opens up doors for you, whether whether you make a million dollars or six figures or just 50k years doesn't matter doesn't matter at the end of the day the number doesn't matter at the end of the day whatever you bring in and money in itself feels good to you and you feel abundant and you feel wealthy and you have a powerful relationship with money then that's what counts however amount it chooses to come into your reality. So just a few thoughts for you to think about. Um, and yeah, we're going to continue this money conversation because I'm loving it. And I will speak to you all tomorrow for day 160 already. <laughs> Bye.